Hey everybody, Varun here from Language Academy. Guys, welcome back to another episode of our reading and writing blanks. One of the tasks a lot of students do struggle with and I've personally seen a lot of students do struggle in this particular task. So I thought, why not show you guys how I do my reading and writing blanks. If I go and sit for the exam or whenever I go and sit for the exam to experiment few things, how do I tackle reading and writing blanks? What I'll be going today is I'll be sharing my screen with you. I'll do around 8 to 10 reading and writing blanks and tell you what is my thought process when it comes to solving reading and writing blanks. There are times when I'm not really sure that which form of verb will go, what is the correct grammatical sense, what is the meaning of the word. Despite that, how you have to solve it, that is what I'm going to show you in this video. So without any further delays, let's get started. Let's have a look at the way I solve reading and writing blanks and one thing I make sure that I'll make sure that if you've watched this video till the very end, I'm going to give out you few rules which you can apply and 120% you are going to improve when it comes to your reading fill in the blanks. Let's get started guys. So as you can see on your screen, I'm using Language Academy's portal um, to practice. We'll just go here, practice material, reading, writing blanks. Let's start somewhere here or let's start here. Alright, let's start with this one, right? So as soon as I'll get this passage on the screen, the very first thing what I'll do is I'll quickly skim through the passage just to get a bit of idea what they're talking about. Remember this thing, a lot of time you will have the, pass the answer within the passage itself and it's very very important you read each and everything. What PT will do is they'll give you, um, for example, they'll give you one blank in the first sentence, another blank in the third sentence and after that, after the third sentence you'll have four to five sentences without any kind of blank. What students do is they'll just read the first sentence and the third sentence. You need to make sure if there is anything on the screen that is for a purpose that is on purpose by PT. You need to make sure you read each and everything on your screen even if the sentence has got any blank or no. You have to read each and everything out of it because a lot of time you will have the answer in sentences without any kind of blank. So let's have a screen over here. Cultural um, Cultural studies in a new is a new way of engaging in study in the study of dash in the study of dash right what I'll do over here without looking at the options I'll try to guess a word by myself I'll try to predict a word by myself that will improve the chances of being correct when it comes to choosing the right answer all right study of um, something related with culture obviously let's read in past many academic subjects including anthropology history literary study have brought disciplinary concerns into study of culture see we have got the same um, collocation in the second sentence over here study of culture i think there are very high chances yes study of custom we don't have anything about custom over here we don't have anything about background we don't have anything about society by default culture now, however in recent decades there has been a dash in trust in the study of culture that has crossed disciplinary dash the resulting activities cultural studies have emerged so the next sentence is positive about cultural studies so in here there has been a dash interest there has been a um, kind of increased interest why because the studies are emerging there's something positive about studies in the next sentence and there's no contradictory word so the sentence before that will be positive as well right so we have to look for a positive word now let's have a look at the option improved improved can be the right answer but why i will not select improved because before a vowel you'll have an before words starting with a i um a i e o u you will have an but we don't have an we cannot use improved we cannot use converted interest or transformed interest why converted means when you change something on purpose transformed is similar as well by default we are left with renewed now let's say i don't know the meaning of renewed right what i'll do is i'll eliminate the options i eliminated important because they are talking about a important you'll always say an important and then transformed and converted we don't have any information about that by default renewed goes to be the right answer let's have a look at the next one has crossed what do you normally cross you cross um you you can say i cross the state i cross the nation something like that right um the resulting activities have emerged in inquiry which promises to do so while there is a little doubt that cultural studies are coming up to be widely recognized and in distinctive italian component now in the second last sentence we have got this that 
it does seem to encompass encompass a potentially enormous area means yes it is there in a lot of studies a lot of subjects now so we have to see disciplinary limits when do you use the word limit i don't know let's say i don't know when do we use the word limit right what i'll do i'll similarly make a sentence in my head in my i'll just make a short sentence don't cross the limit so limit is more used in negative context we won't use the word limit over here borders is always used for physical things don't cross the border you'll never say that don't cross my border my border may, will be kind of a physical thing but we don't have any physical thing over here we only have what we have we are talking about studies so we don't won't use the word borders over here and margins margin is always used for slight line right of um, small line a margin of error you can say by default boundaries why boundaries because they're talking about one subject and another subject disciplinary boundaries according to me is the right answer all right the next blank says it does seem to encompass a potentially enormous area this is because the term culture has a complex history and range of uses which have provided a dash focus of inquiry inquiry for several academic disciplines provided a dash focus dash focus you'll never say valid unlawful and valid unlawful and legitimate legitimate focus is a collocation remember this thing this collocation repeats a lot in the exam you need to remember it you need to note it down legitimate focus is a collocation remember this thing let's have a look at the answers yes um all the answers are correct why study of culture because they're talking about culture again and again why boundaries why not limits limit is a negative word um then you have got borders borders is used for physical things and then renewed why renewed because we eliminated other options that's what you need to do you need to eliminate the wrong options whenever you're not really sure let's move on to the next one let's see how we go in that all right dental erosion is one of the most common dash problems in the world now what i'll do over here first of all i'll quickly guess a word which can go over here dental erosion is one of the most common tooth problem you can use tooth, tooth problems right fizzy drinks fruit juice wine or the acidic food and drink are usually too dash although perhaps surprising the way we clean also plays a role okay are the most common tooth problems yes we have got fang fang is used for animals incisors is kind of a teeth type of a teeth dagger let's say i don't know the meaning of dagger i'll just select tooth and move on then drink are usually to dash to dash to consider to um to take a crack at you can say let's look at the options over here so these are the negative things which cause dental problems like right um drinks fruit juice wine and everything so what we have got over here are to guilt you'll never say to guilt this um i am proven guilty you will say you will never say this is to guilt so the meaning may be same as compared to other words this is what happens with a lot of students in the exam as well they're confused between two words in that case you need to make a similar sentence based on both the words and then see which one will come after which for example you never say this is to guilt you'll always say this um, he is proven guilty so we'll never use to guilt and again you'll never say to fault this is to fault you'll always say this is my fault then you have got charge and blame you can say um, he is to be charged or um, this is to charge right and this is to blame this is to blame sounds better why because you will never say to guilt to fault and to charge if you say charge charge again is used in legal terms you will never you um, say that my body is to be charged right but yes bad habits are to be blamed because of my poor health so blame will be the right answer over here although perhaps surprisingly the way we clean our tooth also teeth also plays a role this all makes it sounds like a rather modern issue but researcher actually dash humans have been searching dental erosion for millions of years researcher actually research research actually so singular subject over here not researches or research actually dash humans have been okay what will research first of all over here you'll have a plural word right you'll always say boys play in the ground boy plays in the ground subject is singular you will use the verb in a plural form so we have to use a word with ending with s let's have a look at the options suggest advice research advice advocate research advocates implies research not imply research implies researchers imply so we have only got one word ending with s we'll select that then you have got this adds to the evidence that prehistoric humans and their predecessors dash sur surprisingly similar dental problems to ourselves now 
they are talking about past in the last sentence of the of of our predecessors, people who lived in the past. We'll have ed form basically over here. The more chances you'll have a word in the past form. Let's have a look at the option. We have two options. So beard and suffered. Now, when do we use the word beer? I will bear the pain. We'll never say I will bear the disease. I'll suffer the disease or he's suffering from this particular disease because they're talking about disease over here we'll use the word suffered and let's submit let's see how many we've got so that um, we have got all the options correct again guys what you need to do as soon as you get the blank try to think of a word by yourself then see which form of um, verb will it be if there's a verb or which form of the verb um, which word which type of word adjective or um, noun or pronoun which one will be there and based on that eliminate the options you have to consider the context as well another thing you can eliminate the options based on singular and plural as well let's have a look on the at the next one please number 33 now it starts like I do not think I am dash the meaning of drama now if I have to make a sentence in my mind I'll just say I'm playing I'll never say I'm play I am I'm I'm you know you'll say I am cutting the trees you'll never say I'm cut the trees right so probably a word with ing over here I do not think I am dash the usual meaning of drama if I define it as a presentation define so they're defining something I am dash the meaning I am ing we have got two forms right twisting and slating now slating and twisting kind of similar but when do you use the word twisting you cannot slate a definition you can twist the meaning of the words you cannot slate you can never say I'm slating the meaning of the words I'm twisting the meaning of the word right means I'm changing the meaning or I'm trying to focus on something else rather than what it actually means that's why I will select the word twisting over here then let's come to the next blank right this is dash as a working definition simple enough to be recalled easily this is presented you can say so basically when I framed a sentence in my head I got a word over here which ended with ed so I will look and I'll be more inclined with words ending with ed over here this is dash as a working this is played as a this is suggested as a you'll never this this is suggest as a right so you'll use third form again over here you will use um, probably you will use ed over here let's have a look at the options so we have got three words ending with ed intended projected and planned now we have to see the usage of the words you will always use the word projected when you try to guess something and when you use the word projected for numbers the sales is sales are projected to be this you'll never say the meaning is projected then you have got planned when you use planned for things you are actually going to do in the forthcoming future by default we have got or we are left with intended when you use the word intended when you mean something when you try to convey something because they're talking about I am not twisting the meaning and the passage talks about definition and meaning you will use the word intended over here ending with ed remember this thing alright then we have got to say that the performers interact with each other might seem unnecessary but is in import but is in fact important for traditional societies there are many performances in which different characters appear successively and dash but never interact now and right you have got the word and over here remember this thing if the word before and is negative the word after and will be negative as well and if you have got or if the word before or is negative the word after or will be positive now we have got successively means together you will have a similar word in the blank as well together or um, you can use consecutively simultaneously things like this right you can use words like this successively and dash now separately you, you, you won't use the word separately because successively means together and separately means no, not together and then chorus is not related to the context over here either consecutively or simultaneously now when you look over here successively and simultaneously sounds better and what do you mean by consecutively kind of similar to simultaneously but yes simultaneously and successively is a right collocation words which go together and words which a native speaker will speak together in his daily life right um, successively and simultaneously but never interact let's have a look at the answers here yes everything is correct again try to guess a word by yourself and if you're confused between two options try to see 
where that particular is particular word is used and what do you normally use before that word and what do you use after that word if you're still confused see which one sounds better go with that one don't keep on changing or jumbling the options you'll just waste your time over there let's move on to the next one please number 34 it is in natural sciences such as physics or chemistry it is dash to use the scientific method it is comparatively easy it is quite easy can be the right answer um, let's have a look here moderately won't be the right answer you never say this is moderately easy this you'll simply say this is moderate it is quite easy can be the right answer it is rather easy can be the right answer but rather is more used for comparison we don't have a comparison um, till now relatively easy can be the right answer as well now in, I'm confused between quite and relatively what I'll do is I'll quickly skim the passage and see if I get any similar collocation in the passage itself right, let's have a look over here it is dash easy to use the laboratory control groups groups can be dash it then becomes relatively easy we have got relatively easy collocation in the passage I'll ju just select relatively over here because they're using the same collocation again and again in the passage and I'll move on now control groups can be after B you normally use ED can be completed can be formed right now I'm not really sure what will be the right word but I know that it should end with ED control groups can be cricket can be played you'll never say cricket can be play or cricket can be playing you'll say cricket can be played control groups can be formed something like this now how many words we have got uh, ending with ed recognized and established now recognize when do you recognize something when it is already there but what is the passage talking about observations can be made with some degree of certainty control groups dash with dash it then becomes relatively easy to accept or refute a particular hypothesis this is much more difficult in social sciences such as economics sociology politics and anthropology in economics it is often not possible to set up experiments to test hypotheses it is not often possible to establish control groups so we have got the word established with control groups over here we'll just use established over here and move on even though ed form was with recognized as well but they're talking about establishing control groups we'll use the word established over here and move on let's move on to the next blank it is often not possible to establish control groups or to dash experiments in environments that enable one factor to be varied while keeping the other constant now what do you do with experiments you undertake the experiments you conduct the experiment or you perform an experiment now you will never say to ways experiments to behavior experiments either conduct or perform now I'm confused between conduct and perform what I'll do is I'll again make similar sentences in my mind now if I'm taking or if I'm doing something right if I'm not participating but I am leading that I'll say I'm conducting a class and if you are attending my class you'll say I am performing in the class or I'm taking the class so if you're doing something but you're not actively um, involved in that there is another subject which is involved in that you are likely to use conduct for that particular subject so if you're not actively involved in something but the other subject on which you are working upon is you are conducting that particular thing that particular scenario is being conducted by you you always say the tutor will conduct the class students will participate in the class so over here they are conducting experiments why not perform because I am not doing anything in the experiment whatever I am experimenting with is the thing which is playing an active role in that particular experiment difference between conduct and perform when you do something and others attend it or others do something more in that you conduct it and others perform in that so you are performing dance means you are dancing I'm conducting the dance class means I'm instructing you how to do it because we are doing the experiments you always use we are conducting the experiments right let's select conduct over here and then the economist has to gather data in the ordinary everyday world where many dash are changing now we have got the word r over here means the sentence the word before this should be plural for example you never say boy are playing you'll say boys are playing so let's see how many words are ending with s only one variables and that's it that's all you have to select let's submit it and move on so be very careful try to make similar sentences before you look at the options try to think of a word which will go over there and you will be able to recognize the right word let's have a look at another one please there is a need to disclose business dash 
the data can be used to test which company dash climate change from that fact the government campaigners and environmental dash can decide whether to tax them heavily for the ecological footprints they left on the environment there is a need to disclose business dash business um they're talking about climate change over here right so something related to pollution business desire desire is a positive word production production again they talking they're not talking about sales or goods over here they're talking about pollution over here right um then you're, they're talking about environment and climate change so that's basically pollution pollution business release releases again can be your data release can be your product release by default we have got business emissions what do you mean by business emissions how many um, you know pollutants a particular business is emitting into the environment business emissions will be the right answer over here the data can be used to test which company dash climate change source climate change causes climate change something similar now we have got both the words over here causes and source climate change now we normally use the word causes in negative context and source can be used in negative and positive context for example i'll never say i'm causing you a benefit i am benefiting you in any form but i am the source of benefit you can use so source can be used in positive and negative and causes can be used in is more likely to be used in negative context by default i'll select cause over here causes over here and move on um from that fact the government campaigners and environmental dash so something related to campaigners because i told you the word before and after and will be similar and dash now investigator is similar examiner is similar invigilator is similar as well now i don't know which is the right answer what i'll do is i'll look for the hints given in the passage this will never be the case that you don't have any hint in the passage you will have but you have to recognize them now campaigners you always say boys and girls you'll never say boy and girls right so if you have a plural before and more likely or most likely you have a plural after that as well how many words do we have with s only one invigilators and that's it even if i don't know the difference between two words i'll select one ending with s government campaigners and environmental invigilators both ending campaigners and invigilators both ending with s sound straight and both words before and and should be same or similar that's what we have done let's have a look at the options over here three of the options or three of the answers are correct and that is how you have to solve all your reading and writing blanks let's have a look at another one guys with the dash of the military the demand for armed forces is forces decreasing now the um demand for armed forces is decreasing when do you decrease the demand of um of something when you have alternatives right this has opened more positions to women including work in military comma so this is a different clause and the next one is different clause dash they work behind the front line of war means more positions have um um are more positions are available for women including the work in military but they have to work behind the work behind the front line of war with the dash of military with the retreat and proceed won't be the right answer you'll never say military has retreated or proceeded either progress or advances now when do you would use the word progress progress is to move on and advances is used when you have more advancement in the particular setup for example i'll say i have an advanced software i'll never say i have progressed with the software we need to progress in our journey means we have to keep going but when you use or because the text over here the next sentence says that yes um over here they have decreased the need of armed forces means there is some kind of advancement that's why the need of people has reduced over there i'll select advances over here now this has opened more positions to women including work in military comma they work behind the probably because what 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 i understand or what i infer from the passage over here that yes more women um, they have more position for women available but they have to work given that they have to work in the front line of war so let's see what are the options offer you never say offer they supply they afford they you, okay you can use offer they and provide it right some students will be confused between offer as well why why would i not select offer and i'll select provide it because this is a condition that yes we have opened up more positions for women out there but they have to fight or they have to work in the front line of war provided will be the right answer here let's have a look 
yes both the options are correct so try to understand the context in here it was more based on context if you understand the context try to frame a story in your head and you will be able to select better answers let's do another one see how we go in that undoubtedly the use of dash has improved human welfare Im use of dash has improved human welfare and helped to accelerate the process of development there have however been a series of side effects that have had a serious impact on wildlife dash use of something right use of substance can be the right answer element can be the right answer chemicals can be the right answer compound can be the right answer i don't know the meaning of compound for example what i'll do is i'll look at the passage all of these options can go but what i'll do over here i'll look at the passage in here one of the first widespread consequences of chemical use now they're talking about chemicals chemicals again in the passage use of chemicals will be the right answer use of chemical has improved human welfare but it has um, it has caused a lot of serious impacts on the wildlife dash wildlife people is not the right answer wildlife residents is not the right answer population is never used with wildlife by default we are left with population you'll never use i don't know the right answer over here i eliminate the wrong options then you have got they were used to control various kinds of dash pests now we have got you'll never use underdeveloped pest pest is kind of an insect you can say or rural pest rural is more used for people living in um, village areas right or countryside either farming or agriculture now when do you use the word farming he is into farming you'll never say this is a farming pest farming is an activity you can never say this is a this is an insect of activity right by default because farming is used more oftenly as a verb because he is into farming or he does farming we have got the word agricultural over here i'll go with agriculture i eliminated two options i was confused between farming and agricultural but i'll never say this is an insect of farming right he is into farming he does farming but he'll never say that there is a lot of pest related to farming yes there are a lot of pest which impact the crops that's why i've used the word agricultural over here next option is next blank is the potential for increasing food production in countries with dash expanding population seems vast so expanding population quickly expanding or rapidly expanding or improving or at a with fast expanding kind of similar word will be here now we have got all the options right we have all the options i'm really really confused when do you use the word fast now remember this thing this is your academic exam this is your academic exam and you have to use more formal words sometimes you'll have pretty similar words right for example quick and fast or rapid similar word you have to use the word which is the uh, the most formal word or more academic word and which is more used in formal english right with dash expanding population seems vast now quickly you'll never say hastily or fast expanding you'll simply say this is quickly expanding or rapidly expanding this is growing at a fast rate not this is fast expanding right so either quickly or rapidly i'm confused between quickly and rapidly now what i'll do i'll select the one which is more formal you have to do this quick you have to do this at a rapid pace right rapid is more formal more academic i'll select rapidly and see what we have got over here again all the four options are correct you need to make sure whenever you are in doubt and when two words are very very close enough try to see the usage of that particular word each and every word and see which one goes better and which one is more academic more formal and that's how you can figure out the right words let's do last one one more and then we'll wrap up this video under nutrition and related diseases kill between 15 to 18 million people a year the dash are children the majority are children the most of them are children the um, not minority because yes poverty will m is more likely to impact small kids right so majority let's have a look at the options mass you'll never say mass are you'll just say the mass is are gathered you'll say bulk bulk is used for quantity for goods and mainstream is not the right word here majority is the right word at least 500 millions are dash hungry the tragic paradox of massive suffering amid global plenty traces in part to dash poverty which denies access to food even where it piles high in village market at least 500 million are dash hungry 
unendingly hungry you never say i am unendingly hungry means i always feel hungry right that doesn't really means i am going through poverty acutely is not the right answer acute is more used for short term i can say right and then frequently frequently i can be frequently hungry as well i feel frequently hungry means um, i feel hungry after 2 or 3 hours or after 1 hour that doesn't really means i'm suffering from poverty but what does chronically means from a very long time chronically means from a very long time now let's say i don't know the meaning of chronically um, what i'll do is i'll eliminate the options unendingly means he will never be able to get rid of his hungriness means he will always be hungry that is not the case when it comes to poverty and then acutely is from short time if you are hungry from short time you're not going through poverty and then frequently means you feel like eating something every now and then that doesn't really implies that you're suffering or you're impacted by poverty by default chronically is the right answer the tragic paradox of massive suffering amid global plenty traces in part 2 in part 2 means um some proportion remember this thing in part 2 means some proportion in part 2 dash poverty dash poverty which denies um traces in part 2 dash poverty which denies okay let's have a look at the options i'm not really able to guess which can which word will be there in part 2 common poverty there's nothing called there is common poverty there's nothing called common poverty rife and limited limited poverty is a good thing is a positive context but the passage is negative we have to use a word which is negative now when you it comes to widespread poverty means widespread poverty sounds better to me why because if you look over here it kills between 15 to 18 million people a year which is a big number means yes poverty is there on a large scale that's why i think poverty widespread will go with poverty because they're talking about a large mass over here let's select widespread and then see what are the right answers again um all the answers are correct so what i did over here whenever i was not sure about the right option what i did i eliminated other options and then whatever was left i saw if i was confused between two i saw which is more academic more formal and which is more used in that particular language that particular context and selected that particular answer this is what you have to do when it comes to your drag and drop blanks or drop down blanks try to understand the context look for the collocations in the text if not sure and if you don't know the meaning don't select the right answer eliminate the wrong options eliminate the wrong options and that way you will be better off and there are very high chances you get the right answer one more hint which i'll give you right whenever you're confused what you need to do is on the notepad and the marker use the marker provided to you when um you go and sit for the exam write down 1 2 3 4 on your notebook what happens sometimes we are pretty sure that two options are not correct but we keep on looking at them again and again write 1 2 3 4 you know one is not the right answer cut it off you know three is not the right answer cut it off now just focus on two and four if you won't cut it off on your notepad you will keep on looking at the same options again and again so whenever you're confused write down 1 2 3 4 on your notepad eliminate the wrong options look at the two which you're left with and once you decide that two is also not the right answer cut it off select four and move on don't just keep on jumbling them again and again if you'll do so you'll be very confused and that way you will be more likely to get the right answer guys that's it from this video um this is how you have to solve each and every passage you get in the um exam each and everything easy if i can do it you can do it as well if a lot of my students do it on every day basis you can do it as well but you need to make sure you are 110% focused pay 110% attention to what is on the screen try to understand the context see which one is more academic more formal select that one do not keep on changing take an action take one decision and stick to that and move on to the next one you are more likely to get the right answer with your first instinct and then you will save your time as well if you do have any doubts if you want me to make any other video any doubt you have any help you need please do leave that down in the comment section i'll try my best to answer each and everything if you think the video was helpful please do like share it with your friends subscribe the channel that will help me going on Another thing guys if you are looking for online training or on campus training here in Sydney or Parramatta or if you are looking for some type of video course I have designed one video course which has got a lot more tricks each and everything you need to crack your exam is there in the video course all the tricks all the templates plus the secrets which I figured out 
taking the exam scoring 95 times what i have figured out i have included each and everything in that particular video course you can subscribe to that video course just go on to language academy and you can subscribe to video course over there another thing i have added the link to the video course you can subscribe from the link as well if you do have any doubts please do let me know i'll try to cover that as well Thank you guys. If you do get your result watching the videos, please do let me know. That is one thing I work for, which is my dream to help as many as students to get 90, a perfect 90 actually. If you do get your score, please do let me know and I'll be very happy and that will keep me going on.